And you know what's funny is I didn't mention the Cheeseman one because I feel like I'm just annoying with it. And then that's the one that got asked. Yep. But our Jamin Davis question didn't get asked. Cheeseman was the biggest takeaway today. Mm, didn't see that one coming. Did not. They're about uh, a month late, though. It is pretty wild to me that they're just letting him work through it. I mean, it's it's not as wild as the fact that they traded up for a long snapper. A position that you can 1,000% take undrafted. This is sidebar rant activated. This is my biggest gripe with Rivera and the whole regime, right? It's not that they're not good. It's not that they have no idea what they're doing because that's, that's taking it way too far. It's not even that they messed up quarterback because they... You know, they've tried some, I would say, reasonable things. Uh, the Wentz thing, I thoroughly disagree with, but it wasn't an unreasonable. The price was, which is actually going to fold into my argument, but, like, the idea that you acquired Carson Wentz coming off what he was in 2021 was not ridiculous. Like, I mean, you know as well as anyone, Anthony, you're, you're Mr. Colts over there. Like, he was fine. They won nine straight games. You could clearly, that version of Carson Wentz, you could win with him. It was not with the formula they tried here, which was turning him around and handing the ball to Jonathan Taylor, which, you know, was not an option here, but that's a different story. But the idea that you could build a system around Carson Wentz and use some of his strengths to, uh, you know, offset a, a different game plan and then hide his weaknesses, not unreasonable. Um, not what I would have done, but not unreasonable. But my big gripe with Rivera and the thing that is, kept this franchise where it is underneath him, which is, by the way, by and large, the exact play, same place it was under Jay Gruden from a football wins and losses standpoint, although the last year under Gruden was a disaster, is that they misallocate resources with tremendous consistency, which is not a compliment. Consistency is good, except for when you're consistently doing something wrong. Trading up for a long snapper is a heinous use of resources in the NFL. A position that you can get undrafted whenever you want or use the last pick in the draft on. No one was taking Cameron Cheeseman, certainly before whenever they were scheduled to pick next, where they had to trade up for him, or they weren't going to take him at all. And if they were, if Cameron Cheeseman's so good as a long snapper that he's worth taking in the fifth round, the next best long snapper is not that much worse. He's not the number of wins versus losses. Not a thing that's going to be affected by the long snapper unless he does the one thing that he's been doing for the last two months, put snaps in the dirt. Like I, the math ain't mathing, man. And whether it's again, misallocation of resources. It goes to our Jamin Davis. You didn't, you didn't think I was going to tie together the Jamin and the Cameron Cheeseman, did you? No, I, not at all. I'm, I'm looking forward to see how you tie this together. But there is a thread going straight through the middle of it, which is Jamin, good football player, potential f- good use of first-round pick if he turns out to be a stud. If he turns into Fred Warner, she's like, fine. You think Fred Warner doesn't have a monstrous impact on San Francisco's defense? Of course he does. But middle linebacker is a position that's become devalued. They're easier to get in later rounds. So if you take the guy, he better be a starter and a stud for you to make it worth it. So what has Jamin done? Started slow, which anybody who scouted him would have told you would happen. And then, and then, they've reduced his role in years two and three as he has gotten better and is capable of handling more. So you have this guy that you overdrafted, which means that your plans for him should have been, we are going to play him a lot. And then you don't play him 30 plus percent of the snaps for a guy you signed that isn't exactly crushing it in training camp in Cody Barton. You signed to play the position you drafted Jamin for in the first round anyway? Huh? What? Obviously, financially, also made some pretty big mistakes. The William Jackson III contract being the biggest amongst them. I just, that's that's the thing that keeps you 
between seven and 10 wins in the NFL where great teams are getting incredible performance out of minimal resource use and stud performance out of maximal resource use. The commanders are getting a potpourri of everything, which means you average out in the end. Like, yeah, you're getting great production from Cam Curl, but it, you got no production, negative, uh, negatively impactful production from William Jackson III, and that's how your secondary's mediocre and, and a liability when it should be a strength the last couple of years and why you win eight games instead of 10 to 11, 12. Like that's, that's how it happens. That's the pieces coming together. That's the mystery as much as anything as if there's mystery between that and, you know, quarterback. But Anthony, that's it. That's the tie that binds. I mean, I like it. Uh, common theme in terms of, you know, uh, uh, misallocation of resources. Plus, that phrase just makes us sound so smart. Yeah. What did they talk about on the Hoffman Show today? Misallocation of resources. <laughs> I mean, you, you're right. We did trade up for a specialist all the way to the fifth round, which is you know a little absurd. By the way, when they had a guy who was just fine in Nick Sumberg, who was mm-hmm. beloved in the locker room and yep. an asset in the community, not that that inherently saves your spot, but like you got a no worries long snapper who makes you a better franchise. What are you doing moving on from him? And Cal Bear on Cal Bear crime. Rivera doing that to Nick Sunberg should take yeah. away his degree. <laughs> yeah, that's bad stuff. But I'm not gonna lie, Craig. We we've seen you know some some specialists get cut, and I don't you know want you know Cheeseman to you know get cut or anything. But you know we do expect him to you know be a little bit better. But again, you know taking a chance on a specialist by drafting him, that's like it has to pay off if we're gonna, uh, you know, take that that chance. And quite frankly, it's it's been all right. I'll say. Yeah. No. I mean, we've seen it. There was a, one of the drafted kickers that just got K. Cut. York from the yeah, Browns. Yeah, K. York, fourth rounder last year from the Browns, and it's just like, when will teams learn not to? You don't need to do that. Mm-hmm. There's some dude on the street, or you know, sure. Seb- Sebastian Janikowski, <laughs> twenty years. Of excellence, yeah, worth a first rounder, sure. Yeah. And by the way, he makes kicks other dudes couldn't make, fifty-eight yarders on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Fine, unless it's that dude, and still a first round, bit ridiculous. Um, it's just it's just not necessary. And teams eventually, you know, every other team's. I don't say every other team because you know, I guess we're talking about other teams doing it. But and the Niners just did it. Like the Niners are supposed to be smart. I don't get it, man. I mean, you can find a a guy like Justin Tucker, you know, that can go undrafted and end up being right the greatest kick ever. But like even even Justin Tucker, over the course of he's probably what ten years in with the Ravens or something like that. Yep. How many games has he truly won them? Not how many game winning kicks, because other kickers could have made those kicks. Mm-hmm. How many games has he truly won them? Probably a couple. Yeah. He's got some sixty plus yarders and like. The one His that, consistency is yeah. tremendous. Like, if he's going on average five for five when everyone else would go four for five, like, yeah, eventually that's worth a game or two. So I'm not saying it's nothing. But what's the difference between that and the next guy compared to that and the next middle linebacker, that and the next guard, that and the next mm-hmm. for sure quarterback? Yep. That's the question when you talk about resource allocation. Didn't think we'd have a resource allocation ramp, but that's what you get when you got a three-minute press conference. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.